In today's video we are going to build a simple arcade style car controller. We will learn how the wheel collider component works, how to set its parameters and build a camera follow script. Let's begin. First create a new Unity project, we will be using Unity 2019.2 for this. Let's also make it a lightweight render pipeline project. Let's remove example assets from the scene first. Now we will make our ground object, so add a plane, make it a little bigger and call it ground. For our car we will use an arcade free racing car, a free package from the Unity Asset Store. Find the prefabs folder in the package, then get any car and place it on our ground. Let's reset its transform position as well. As we can see the entire car is in magenta. That indicates a problem with shaders. To fix it we have to upgrade shaders to the lightweight render pipeline. We can do it by clicking Edit, Render Pipeline, Lightweight Render Pipeline, click Upgrade Project Materials and then click Proceed. Now the materials are rendered properly. Find our car in the scene, break the prefab connection and change its name. For the wheel collider component to work, the car object has to have a specific hierarchy. Let's see what it should look like. First we will add an empty game object called visual in which we will keep all of our mesh renderer components. Next add a wheel game object and move all of the wheel meshes there. In the wheel game object we will have two children, one for the wheel meshes and one for the wheel colliders. Let's add the first one, call it wheel transforms and move the wheel meshes under it. Now add a rigid body component onto the root game object. Wheel colliders are driven by the physics engine, so rigid body is a necessary component. Next add a box collider and try to adjust its size and sensor so it covers the car fairly close. Now create an empty game object to hold the wheel colliders. Let's name the objects properly. Now we will prepare the first wheel collider. Add a component, position it roughly in the same position as the wheel mesh and tweak the radius value on the component to match the mesh. Now we can duplicate our wheel collider game object and position it in place of the other wheels. Let's also name them correctly. Now we can move to writing the car script that will drive the wheel colliders so let's go to scripts folder and create a new c -sharp script called car controller. Open that script in code editor. All of the steering methods will use the physics engine, so we have to use the fixed update method. We will first get the user input, then we will add force to our wheels, then handle the wheel rotations and lastly update the wheel visuals. Let's declare necessary variables for our gets input method. First we will need two floats to store our actual input values. Let's also declare constant strings for axis names. Those names are set in the Unity input settings. In the method itself we will assign the values from input.getAxis methods to our horizontal and vertical inputs, which will take the axis name as the parameter. Let's also add a breaking input when pressing the spacebar. So add a boolean called isBreaking and set its value equal to spacebar being pressed. Now the handle motor method which will drive the wheel colliders. For that we will need references to all of our wheel collider components. We will apply force just to the front wheels. We will do it by setting the motor force value in the wheel collider component. So let's assign it to our input multiply by a constant. Let's call that constant motor force. Make it visible in the inspector. Let's also add a serializable field for the brake force. It will be positive only when the space bar is pressed. So add a temporary brake force value that will be equal to the brake force assigned from the inspector only when the space bar is being pressed. Otherwise it will be equal zero. If the is breaking boolean is true, we will apply the breaking force. 
It is done similarly to applying motor force, but instead of changing the motor torque, we will change the brake torque. Let's assign the current braking force to the brake torque of all the wheel colliders. Now let's handle the car steering. Generate a new method and place it in the proper place in the script according to the execution order. First, we need to declare a variable to store our current steering angle and a serializable variable to set the max steering angle. Similar to braking and motor torques, the steering is driven by changing the variable in the wheel collider component. In this case, we change the steering angle variable. We need to do it only for the front wheels. Lastly, let's implement the update wheels method, which will update the wheel visuals. We will use a method that will update a single wheel, so we don't have to multiply our code for every single wheel. As the parameters, we will take a wheel collider and a wheel transform. We need to assign wheel transforms from the inspector, so let's add serializable fields for transforms similar to wheel colliders. Now we can pass the wheel transform as a parameter to update the single wheel method. To get the position and rotation that we want to apply to the wheel transform, we can use the getWorldPose method in the wheel collider class. This method will take vector3 and quaternion as out parameters and set them based on the changes a wheel collider has made in this frame. Now we can use those values and assign them to wheel transform. Let's do it for every single wheel. So we use the method four times in the update wheels method. Now let's go back to Unity. Let's add a car controller component to the car game object. By trial and error, I came up with the values for motor force 1000, brake force 3000, and steering angle of 30. Next, add all the necessary inspector fields for the wheel colliders and transforms. Next, position the scene view behind the car and align the camera to the view. Hit play and let's see what will happen. Ok, move the camera a little bit further. Now hit play again and our car falls down. Let's fix that. We have to move the ground game object below the car so it can actually stop somewhere. So let's reset its transform and scale it again. Now hit play and see our car bouncing around. That's because the mass on the rigid body component is set to 1. So 1 kilogram car is falling on suspension made for a 1 ton car. Let's fix that and set the mass to 1500 and hit play again. We have one last problem with our car setup. Right now, even though we press the input button, the car sits still. We place the box collider on the car wrong. Let's fix that as well. The box collider has to cover only the car body and not the wheels. Otherwise, the wheel transform will not be able to touch the ground. Let's hit play again. And we have our first drivable version that flips when we steer a little bit too much. To change that, we have to go back to the wheel collider component. This is the place where all of the magic happens. We can set up different car behaviors. The explanation of those values is a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but I strongly encourage you to read the documentation and play around with those values. To fix our flipping car, let's make the suspension two times stronger and hit play again. Unfortunately, our car is still flipping. That's because we have to apply suspension changes to all of the wheel colliders. Let's just copy the component values and apply them to other wheels and hit play again. Now our car is sticking to the ground. Oh, where did it go? There it is. It's also sliding nicely when we steer with high speed. Let's hop to the last part of the camera follow script. Find the camera in the scene view. Remove the attached script if there is one. And add a new script called camera follow. Open that script. 
In the fixed update, declare two methods – handle translation and handle rotation. For translation, we will need a vector 3 that will be an offset from the camera to the car, a reference to the car transform and a speed with which the camera will follow the car. Now, to get a word position from the local position, we can use the transform point method that will convert the local position of the transform that this method was called on to word position. In our case, it is the target, so the car. Now we can interpolate between the current position and a target position by translation speed. It is not the proper use of the lerp method, we should use the smooth dump method, but it will work too. It is my mistake doing it with the lerp method. Now for the handle rotation, first we need to declare a rotation speed. In the method we will find the direction from our position to the target position and convert it to quaternion using the look rotation method with the y axis as the up direction. Then we will lerp from our current rotation to the target rotation by rotation speed. Same as with translation, it is better to use the smooth dump method. And this is it for this script. Now go back to Unity and fill the inspector fields. You can use the same values as me or set them to your liking. There is one more bug that I found. Here should be a minus sign and not an equals sign. Let's save and go back to Unity. Now we can see that the camera is following the car pretty smoothly. There are two things I would like to change. First, fix the camera offset a little bit. Also, we can't really see how fast we are moving, so let's add some environment to the scene. I will just add some simple pillars. Now hit play and see the car in its full glory. We can accelerate, turn, brake and even bump into things. And that's it guys. You can find the whole project on GitHub. The link is in the description below. I hope you enjoyed it and please like and subscribe if you like my content. There are new videos every Monday. Also leave a comment, I'm happy to answer all of your questions. Take care.